Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter and today we're going to be using the power of ratios to beat S&P 500 returns. Now just as a quick recap, the S&P 500 is not the only index that you can use to expose yourself to the stock market, right? You've got indices that give you exposure to small cap stocks, mid cap stocks, tech, healthcare, consumer staples. You've got an infinite number of ways to have exposure to stocks. So if we can find certain indices or certain sectors that are going to outperform the general market, then we've succeeded in our job as investors and traders because after all, that is what we're trying to do. Beat the S&P 500, whether that's by timing the markets, right? Timing the tops, taking advantage of big drawdowns like we did back in February and March, or by actually finding specific stocks, indices, sectors that are going to beat the general market. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the small cap. So we're going to take a look at IWM that's been on an absolute tear recently. And that's actually something that back on November 10th, we posted an article on GameOfTrades.net highlighting the major breakout on IWM and the potential switch from growth outperformance to value outperformance as we had that vaccine news that would likely trigger a sharp rally in those small cap stocks. So is it still time to be buying the small caps index? Are they still set to outperform the rest of the stock market? And to take a look at that, again, we're gonna use the power of ratios and we're gonna divide the IWM by the S&P 500. And that gives us this chart right here. And using these ratios should be a part of your investment and trading strategy because they can give you information that no other chart will be able to because technical analysis on these ratios actually works, right? People pay attention to them. People pay attention to the ratio between small caps and the S&P 500. You see you have a nice resistance line here corresponding to this price channel. You had a nice resistance level here in 2002 rejection then you had a breakout back test resumption here it acted as support and during the covid crisis we had a breakdown back test and snap back up that was a huge bear trap and increased the likelihood of seeing a tag of that downtrend line so what are the technicals saying for iwm right now we've just had a strong rejection off this resistance level. This is what you call an impulsive rejection and that's a bearish development. So right now we are bearish on IWM relative to the S&P 500. We don't find the risk reward to be attractive for small caps any longer. Unless we see this type of move, then that would be extremely attractive to enter small cap stocks. Right now we're looking for a resumption back to the bottom of that price channel, which is what we had on every impulsive rejection off that price channel resistance. So IWM unlikely outperformed the S&P 500. By the way, if you haven't already pressed the like button, make sure to go ahead and do that right now. So let's move on to the next sector. And that next index is of course going to be the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ has recently made a beautiful bounce off its 100 day moving average right here and actually broke out above its downtrend line resistance. That's what triggered that impulsive breakout. And this is actually something we were watching closely on gameoftrades.net with our members as the S&P 500 was making this bull flag pattern and ready to break through that resistance level. The dollar was printing bearish divergence right here at resistance, increasing the likelihood of a leg down on DXY, which would push the stock market up and the Nasdaq 100 was coiling up just below that downtrend line and just above major, major support and that 100 day moving average. So is this breakout the real deal? Are we going to be seeing much higher highs on the Nasdaq? And to find out, we're going to take a look at the Nasdaq 100 divided by the S&P 500. Now, this is something that we've taken a look at before on this channel, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. But the Nasdaq 100 has been testing this line of support. This is a major, major level 
corresponding to that top of the dot com bubble right here. So it's been testing that level for the last few weeks and it so far has not been able to break back above this consolidation range. But as soon as it breaks above this line right here, that sets the Nasdaq up for massive outperformance compared to the S&P 500, similar to what we've seen over the last 20 years. The Nasdaq 100 has been outperforming the S&P 500 since 2002. And here we have a beautiful bullish setup right here. This is a breakout back test consolidation ready to resume higher. Now, of course, this can all change if we have a breakdown that would make this a false breakout. But for now, we're keeping that bullish bias on the Nasdaq 100. We are bullish on tech. But now I want to take a look at a specific sector. And this is the point that I wanted to get to in this video. And that is XLE. So the energy sector of the S&P 500, the energy sector has been a huge underperformer of the S&P 500. You can see in 2021, we're currently at the same level that we were at in 2005. But that's a very unimpressive performance of the energy sector. In fact, again, let's take a look at XLE divided by the S&P 500. And here you'll quickly see that from 2000 to 2008, XLE was a massive outperformer of the S&P 500. And after that significant top, we had a major bear market on XLE. Now, the reason for that is because the energy sector is highly correlated with crude oil. And we can take a look at what happened with crude oil over the last 20 years, and that will quickly make you understand what's happening with XLE. You can see this massive rise in price of crude oil from 1999 to 2008. And since then, we've been in a huge bear market that's been defined by this bear market downtrend line right here. Now you can see what's going on with crude oil right here. It's currently attempting to break out above this bear market downtrend line. That's a huge development that's happening right now in crude oil. And that could mark the end of the bear market for crude oil and the end of underperformance for XLE if this breakout holds. So that's what we're looking at over the next few weeks. If we see a resumption off that trend line, a successful breakout, that would mark the beginning of a major outperformance of XLE compared to the S&P 500. And in fact, you can see we're seeing a similar development on this chart of XLE divided by the S&P 500. We had a well-defined downtrend line right here, and we've recently broken out right there. Now we've reversed off resistance and we're coming back down for a back test of this downtrend line. Once this ratio starts to take out this resistance, that's when we could start seeing a strong outperformance of XLE to the S&P 500. And you can see we have barely any resistance until these levels right here. So before the next significant level of resistance from where we currently are sitting, that would be a 90% outperformance of XLE to the S&P 500. And if we continue seeing the dollar depreciate in value and continue its bear market, which is something that we expect over the next few years, crude oil may be heading much, much higher. So we could see XLE come back to these levels relative to the S&P 500, which could take us potentially to a 200% outperformance of XLE to the S&P 500. Now let us know in the comments section what you think of the energy sector, what you think of your outlook for crude oil. Like any investment, there are headwinds. XLE is much more susceptible to an economic crisis, right? We had a we had a violent drop in the valuation of XLE throughout the 2008 crisis. And we of course have the rise of green energy that's recently made a massive run up since that March bottom. So perhaps that is going to take some of the market share out of energy sector stocks to find opportunities on the S&P 500. And you want to find out more about our specific investment thesis looking forward with the dollar bear market, a commodities bull market, what we're doing with emerging markets, cryptocurrencies, make sure to go and check out gameoftrades.net. We do still have a free trial, so don't hesitate to check our service out for free while we still have the free trial running. Now, that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe 
to the channel if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading and see you next time.